So some of you guys may have seen this absolutely ridiculous article from the New York Times, just mind-blowing. Don't go down the rabbit hole in which they essentially argue, guys, that critical thinking is a bad thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to proceed to just dismantle the arguments and show you that they are aligned with deception and propaganda and they are not trying to empower you with the truth. So let's get started. As they explain here, we are taught that in order to protect ourselves from bad information, we need to deeply engage with the stuff that washes up in front of us. So obviously, you debate with somebody. If you disagree with them, you use evidence and you debate with them. But they say in reality, that strategy can completely backfire. Yes, of course it can backfire if you're not aligned with the truth. In other words, resist the lure of rabbit holes. Now let's just put that into perspective, guys. When they say that you need to resist the lure of rabbit holes, what they're saying is you need to resist new intriguing information. In other words, they are advocating that you become dismissive of something you do not agree with. And that is the exact opposite of how we establish the truth. So what do they advocate instead? Well, he argues that the best way to learn about a source of information is not to engage it, but to leave it and look elsewhere. And then they actually proceed to give an example with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And we're not going to look into him. I don't know what arguments he made, but we're going to look into their methodology. What, what is this great method of ascertaining the truth? He states, all we have to do is go to Google. And then he even says, yeah, the author quotes him, look at how fast this is. He told me as he counted the seconds out loud, in 15 seconds, he navigated to Wikipedia. I mean, th this is just, it's shocking. Multiple studies have showed, guys, that Google manipulates search results. This is open knowledge. It is not even something that's controversial. And then very similar with Wikipedia, right? We find the CIA, FBI, and the Vatican, organizations like this are editing and manipulating Wikipedia entries. This guy's supposed to be an academic and he's just, no, oh, you just use Google 15 seconds and then you go to Wikipedia. So let's continue to read. What do they say? Well, from this, the, these searches, these Google searches, what do they find? They find a pattern. Oh, isn't that shocking because it's manipulated, obviously. Mr. Kennedy's claims were outside the consensus. And this, once again, more alarm bells going off, more red flags, guys. What he is insinuating is that a consensus is synonymous with the truth. And that, historically speaking, has almost never been the case, guys. A consensus reflects popular opinion. And how often has popular opinion or accepted opinion really represented the truth? Almost never, right? Big red flag right there. Now, what I want to also do is I'm actually going to take their article and I'm going to weaponize it and use it against them. They say that you should stop and investigate the source. So let's stop and let's investigate the New York Times, right? Well, what we find is they have a decades long history, guys, of deceiving the public and actually spreading very dangerous propaganda. Yeah, through Operation Mockingbird, which was the Central Intelligence Agency operation, where for many, many years, guys, it was for over 20 years, they misled and deceived the public in the United States. More recently in the 90s with the late great journalist Gary Webb, he exposed how the CIA was working with drug traffickers, and this invariably resulted in the crack epidemic in the United States. Well, the New York Times and other establishment media outlets, they embarked on a concerted campaign of character assassination and they ruined Gary Webb's lives. They said he was a liar. Now, historically speaking, in hindsight, we actually know that Gary Webb was telling the truth and they were being deceptive. Once again, this is a real world example of how a consensus does not reflect truth. In even more recent history, we have Glenn Greenwald when he was writing for The Guardian, correspondence and collusion between the New York Times and the CIA. And then also this blog here from Noam Chomsky where he essentially exposes how the New York Times helped to cover up war crimes. But with all of that said, guys, you can clearly see that the New York Times is being extremely, extremely deceptive. Yeah, this is a very low level of propaganda. And to me, it's kind of insightful of how desperate the establishment is getting. They can't compete with millions and millions of people out there who can now actually research for themselves rather than go to one authoritative source of information that we have to just blindly believe. The truth of the matter is there's no substitute for critical thinking and you have to learn how to verify, question and investigate for yourself. Help me spread this because we already know that the New York Times, Google, the establishment media are not going to expose themselves.